I promised you to make a machine gun that shoots marbles. Well, here it is. There's ammo. I bought 5,000 marbles for about 40 euros. I christened it the rotor blade of death. <laughs> Let me show you its features. It has an adjustable angle so that I can have an influence on where it shoots. That was a disadvantage of the dart launcher. The axis is also a lot more precise and uh, runs between two pillars, which makes it a lot more solid. And these are actually the magazines, steel tubes that can hold uh, 12 of the marbles each. And this is the dispenser. And the dispenser works in a way that you can only feed in one after the other, but it will also eject one after the other. If this gets pressed, one ball is ejected, but the others are held back. And if I repeat the action, the next ball will pop out. And so forth. It's important that only one ball leaves the barrel at a time. And of course, the same mechanism is on the other side for balance. So this will turn freely. And you can hear that clack. That's because rotational force is forcing all the marbles to the end of the barrels uh, to the notches. You notice? Now here comes the interesting part, because this is the trigger. If you move this up, then what happens is that when this passes, automatically the shot gets ejected. When this is like this, nothing happens. But when I put it up and it passes, the shot falls. And the same on the other side. Nothing happens. Outside is terrible weather today, therefore, sorry, I can't do any wheel shooting and I have to keep the revs very low, otherwise I will damage everything in this room. <laughs> this can do so much better. But still, let's fire like 10 rounds from each uh, row, so that we'll have a total of 20 shots. Okay, here we go. That's what I call hellfire! <laughs> of course, some parts had to be reinforced with steel, like the trigger here, because the impact of the uh, ends of the uh, latches is enormous. Therefore, the wood would break easily if I wouldn't protect it. So, I guess you want to see how accurate and powerful it is. Well, you have to wait. Maybe I'll do it next week if the weather is fine. But I'm actually fairly happy with it, because it functions almost flawlessly, just a little bit of fine-tuning, and I think it's going to be great fun. A while ago I had a contest on my forum, um, and we've been looking for the best slingshot made from dead wood, like rotten, because we found that you will get the beautiful grain if you use dead wood instead of fresh wood. And Dan Hood, a member on my forum, made one that I love the most. And, believe it or not, he sent it to me as a gift. Ain't that great? Let me show it to you. So what you can see is that it was so rotten that it was hollow. Um, and he filled this with resin. And to me it looks like amber now. It's a beautiful slingshot and it's very, very comfortable to hold. I'm really happy about it. Thanks, Dan. <laughs> also, uh, Peter Hogan from Hogan Castings made the Rambone in aluminum. It's a beautiful piece and of course totally solid. It's really amazing. It's even engraved my name and the name Rambone into it. I think it's available in the store. You have to send Helmut an email because these are very expensive handmade products for metal. And you can see in one of my videos how it's made. It's a very, very laborious process. But I love this thing. So I hope you like this because... <laughs> That's it for today. Thanks and bye bye. Oops, one must have gone fairly high.
whether they say shards are lucky charms, <laughs> let's hope it's true.